Hello folks. Today we're going to talk about a two supply emitter bias for our bipolar junction transistors. The key to this is beta stability in terms of IC. In other words, we want the collector current to be constant in spite of changes in beta. This is a problem we saw with the very first circuit we looked at, the sort of simplified uh, base bias. So what we're going to do is hook up two power supplies through the collector and the emitter. So throwing on an emitter supply is a uh, sort of a new thing here. So here's our plus VCC. The emitter is going to be a negative voltage. So instead of putting a positive out on the base, I'm going to have a negative value out on the emitter. And that will still allow us to produce a plus to minus potential across the base emitter to forward bias this. Remember, base emitter has to be forward, collector base has to be reversed. So here is our circuit. All right, now to solve this, you know, we basically have a couple of loops we could look at. We have a base emitter loop, we have a, you know, a collector base loop. We almost always start in the base emitter because we know that potential. We know that's for a silicon device is around seven tenths of a volt. So this is where we want to focus. Collector base is reverse bias, so we don't necessarily know what that is off the top. Now, remember your power supply, right? This is a negative power supply. So this is really kind of going like this. All right, that's our VEE. So we're going to make a little loop here. And the current is going to flow like so. So this is IB out here. That's flowing plus to minus bottom to top. This would imply a slight negative voltage at the base because there's a drop across the RB, a drop across the base emitter, and then the emitter current's flowing down here. Right? Plus to minus, and we're back to the power supply. So there's our loop. Of course, we'll also have a collector current coming down. Give us a drop across to RC. All right, so we can just do a little KVL on this. All right, we can just say, going around our base emitter loop, um, sum of rises equals sum of drops. So we have, you know, VEE as our rise, right, going around this way. So that's, you know, minus to plus, and then plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So that has to equal the drop on the base resistor, the drop on the base emitter, and the drop on the emitter resistor. So now we're just going to turn these into Ohm's law equivalents. Uh, I'll bring the VBE over because that's a constant as well. So V of R B is I B R B. And V of R E is I E R E. Now, if we approximate the uh, emitter current is equal to the collector current, right, we can call this I C times R E. And then I B, we know, is I C divided by beta. So I'll plug that in I C divided by beta times R B. Now, solve this in terms of IC. And what we wind up with is VE minus VBE divided by the quantity RE plus RB over beta. Okie doke. Now, some people get a little confused by the RE because this is, in fact, a negative power supply. So they say, do I put a negative sign in here? You know, if it's like negative 12 volts, so I put a negative 12. Now, if you look at what we did here, it's the magnitude, okay? So what I like to do very often is I just put an absolute around this so people don't get confused. So you're just going to put the magnitude in there. Now, the important thing to notice about this is if RE is a lot bigger than RB over beta. Beta doesn't make 
a difference. In other words, IC is approximately equal to VEE minus the VBE 0.7 divided by RE. Now, given typical values of beta, right, you're talking, you know, 100, 150, 200, 250, something like that for small signal transistors, what that really means practically is as long as the base resistor is around the same size or smaller than RE, this will be true and you will wind up with very high stability. All right. So, you know, if this was a 10K and this was, a, you know, a 15K or a 4.7K or something like that, you could just run and write it right in, use this approximation and everything would be good. All right. Otherwise, you know, you can just throw in your, your RB over beta term over there. All right. Hey, what about a load line? Now we've looked at load lines before. All right, our DC load line looks like this. Endpoint, saturation, endpoint for cutoff. So what is VCE cutoff? What is IC sat? Well, if we look at a uh, cutoff, right? Remember that's where IC goes to zero. So if IC goes to zero, we have no drop on the collector resistor, no drop on RE. The entire potential VCC to VEE would drop across the transistor. So VCE cutoff is going to be VCC plus, and once again, I'll use the absolutes here so there's no confusion, right, for VEE. So add up this total potential. In other words, if you just took your DMM in lab and you went plus to minus like this, red lead, black lead, that total potential is the cutoff voltage. Now, as far as the saturation current, again, that's where VCE goes to zero. So if that went to zero, that total potential would drop across the two resistors in the collector and emitter. So that is going to equal VCC plus the VEE divided by RC plus RE. And then you will have a Q point, you know, if everything's designed correctly, somewhere out here. You know, you'll have some value of IC, a quiescent value, ICQ, and a quiescent value for the collector emitter, VCEQ. Okay, beauty. Now, let's do an example. And we can see just how stable the circuit's going to wind up being as we change beta. Remember, we want betas to be constant, or excuse me, we want the currents to be constant in spite of changes in beta. We don't want a lot of variation. As, as you're going to see in future work, the gain of an amplifier is partly dependent on what its collector current is. So if the beta varies and that creates a collector current variation, you're going to see a gain variation. That's not something you want. You know, we like to make things that are consistent. Um, you know, by analogy, if you went out and bought a, uh, a new stereo amplifier and it was rated for 100 watts, you know, you're not going to be happy if um, you get one that's 75 watts maximum. And it doesn't help you if, you know, the manufacturer says, well, some of them are, you know, 130 watts. It all averages out to 100. Yeah, but mine is 75, you know. Um, so we want some kind of consistency here. All right, so I'm going to put in 30 volts for the collector supply and a negative 10 down here in the emitter. And we'll just be simple with resistors here. I'll just make a 1K, a 2K, and a, maybe a 5K out here for the base. And I'm going to start out with a beta of 100. Okay, so if we use the approximation, my red approximation over here, We're basically saying uh, the drop across this collector resistor is small enough to ignore. In other words, we're basically assuming that VB is zero volts. Right? In reality, there is a current. There is a slight negative potential there. Maybe it's minus 0 0.1. Maybe it's negative 275 millivolts, you know, whatever it is. That would then indicate VE would have to be 7 tenths less or minus 0.7 volts. So from minus 0.7 to minus 10, that's 9.3 volts, right? So 
10 minus the 0 0.7. That's the drop across this, right? Because we're saying that's zero. There's 0.7. What's left over? 9.3. Right, so my collector and emitter occurrence, we're going to approximate those as being the same. So that's going to be 10 minus 0.7 over 1K, which is 9.3 mils. Now, once I know that current, I can come back here and find the drop across the 2K, right? So the voltage across the collector resistor is going to equal 2K times the current, which will get us 18.6 volts. And I can now determine the collector voltage, right? Remember, don't confuse V of RC and VC. VC, here's the collector. VC, if you, were, if you had your meters, right, had a DMM, you're going to put red lead on the collector, black lead on ground. That's VC. V of RC is this, the drop across the resistor. So here's our total, VCC. Take this, subtract it from this, and what you're left is this. So VC, VCC minus V of RC. That's going to be 30 volts minus the 18.6 we just found. Okay, that's 11.4 volts. Now, what's your VCE? Well, by definition, from collector to emitter is the collector voltage minus the emitter voltage, right? VCE must equal VC minus VE. So that's uh, the 11.4 we just found minus VE, which is a negative 0.7, or 12.1 volts. All right, so our load line winds up looking like this. Our cutoff is the total potential, so that's 30 minus a minus 10. Right, which is 40 volts. And then our saturation is that same potential, right? 40 volts, divided by the total resistance that we have in the collector emitter. 1K plus 2K is 3K. So when I divide that out, I get 13 and a third. And, you know, where are we? Well, we're at 9.3 mils. So we're, you know, quite a ways up here. Here's our Q point. And our voltage is 12.1. Okay, so that's our approximation. If we were going to go and um, do an exact calculation on this, in other words, this formula right here, will be a little bit of a shift, right? Remember what I said, as long as this is around the same size or smaller, well, I just assumed it was and off we went, right? 5K versus 1K. Well. You might say, well, that's not really around the same size. Eh, it's a gray area. Let's figure it out exact and see how far off we are. And using this formula up here, we would uh, throw in our values. It's still going to be um, 10 minus 0.7. And then uh, we have our 1K plus 5K divided by the beta of 100. Well, that, you know, if you compare that to this, what you have down here is um, 9.3 divided by uh, 1,050, right? So we throw in this extra 50 ohms, basically. That's going to decrease the current a little. Turns out to be uh, 8.86 mils. So we're not really that far off, and you know and that's a five to one variation. So um, we're not that far off. We're, you know we're off by like literally five percent. Um, using that current, you could recalculate the drop on the uh, collector resistor, and um, also recalculate your VCE, which I won't show all the details here. You just follow the same thing that that I just did. 
and your new VCE is going to be about 13.4 volts. Okay, now if you took this 8.86 and you divided it by beta, that would get you the IB. Because right? remember, initially we were assuming it was zero, zero volts, and VB was zero, right? That was our initial approximation. So if you take this 8.86 mils and you divide it by 100, you get your base current. Okay? All right. So, you know, we can see that that's obviously a pretty small value. You know, we're looking at uh, 88.6 microamps. If you now multiply that current by the 5K, you'll get your VB, right? Because that's RV. V of RV is you know, IB times RV. So you take um, 88.6 mics times 5K, and that's going to work out to uh, about 0.44 volts approximately. But again, the current's flowing up like this, so that's plus to minus. So your VB is a negative. 0.44 volts. So your emitter really isn't at minus 0.7, right? Your emitter is really um, about minus 1.14. Because you're going from uh, 0.44 or negative 0.44 here down 0.7 to get to your emitter. Right, and uh, you know that's basically how you calculate your VCE. Another way, you know, knowing that you could take your new potential here and calculate your current, and so on and so forth. Well, if we plot this on our load line, and we end up with a new Q point, right? So this is your eight point eight six, and this in here is your thirteen point four. So that's the difference between approximation and exact. Now the question becomes, hey, what about the beta? You know, what happens if you double beta? Where does the Q point wind up? Well, think about this for a sec. If you were to double beta, right, this goes to 200, what happens to this? That piece goes down to 25. Bigger beta, smaller RV over beta. So what does that mean? Well, you're going to get a current somewhere between the original approximation and this more exact value. You know, somewhere in the 9.1-ish milliamps. You know, somewhere in here. Tiny little change. You're going to double beta, and you can get your calculator and, you know, figure out a very precise value for this just to prove it to yourself. But you double beta, and you're only going to wind up with a couple of percent change um, in your collector current, and a similar sort of change in your collector emitter voltage. So we wind up with a very, very stable uh, Q point out of this, right? And that's what we're looking for. We want a stable collector current. Okay, there are other ways to do this. This is a very popular way using the splits power spy. Uh, sometimes you only have one power supply, so you know, how do we approach it with that? Um, that's something we're going to look at next time.